Hi everyone, welcome back to the workshop. Um, you can see we're not in the workshop. It's Saturday after Thanksgiving. There's snow out there and uh, it's melting a little bit, but it's windy and the sun hasn't hit the anvils yet, so I decided to do a little sharpening video in here. People are asking me, like, you know, how do you get your knife sharp? Um, so I'm going to show you. Now, this is not the only way to do it, but I've got a couple straight razors here. Uh, got some other kitchen knife, uh, uh, Bark River type knife that I made. Not Bark River. Um, anyway, this knife. Okay, this pretty little thing right here. Yeah. Made the micarta myself out of blue jeans and t shirt. Green t shirt and blue jeans. Nice out of 80 CRV2. I'm going to show you how to sharpen this bad boy. Um, this is the one that I actually shaved with the other day. Um, so I did get it pretty sharp. I've since used it and messed it up a little bit. So, anyway, we're going to resharpen that. Won't take much. Um, this is my zombie chopper. First off, I don't use this sharpening method for something this large, okay? This is a knife that I built, a blade, I wouldn't call it a knife, a blade that I built for um, knife or death, if I can ever get on there. Uh, I still have to apply. <laughs> Funny. Yeah, okay, so anyway, um, two-handed or one-handed, balance is pretty good, it's pretty forward. I mean, the balance is right there, about an inch or two inches in front of the handle. Um, I took the oak scales off and put some ipe on there and it's way heavier so it brought the balance back a little bit but it is a it is a brute and it will literally shave your arms uh, you know no problems there um, but I sharpened this on the belt grinder on the 2x72 that's the point um, I've got a belt out there that I use as a strop and all it is is an old old belt all the abrasive worn off of it and I've flipped it over backwards so I have the cloth backing and then uh, I just run the same um, buffing compound on there that I put on my on my strop here and just run it backwards and let it power strop this um, it is actually it actually works fabulous okay in a fraction of the time um, I use it, it's basically the same technique that I use here this is a concave grind which means it it is like an apple seed. Uh, it's ground like this. And so it has a secondary edge, a bevel along this edge, this plane here. So it's got a lot of mass behind the cutting edge. Okay, for chopping tasks, that's good. Um, it's made out of a leaf spring 5160, so it shouldn't deform too much. But on knife or death, you see, you know, edges that are damaged a bit. Or on force and fire, you know, during the testing. Okay, so anyway. That's there. This is one of my straight razors. This is already sharp. Um, this is a big boy. Okay, the handle's large, the blade is large. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you. This is a straight razor that was sent to me to actually resharpen to see if I could get sharp again. Now, hey, it's pretty sharp. I mean, it would, it uh, has a it's a really fine edge, okay? I wouldn't say it's really sharp, but if you look at the size difference there, uh, let's see here, there we go. Yeah, there we go, okay. One is a delicate little razor. The other is a manly freaking razor. Um, anyway, it's a bigger, heavier blade. I just, I like this style, I like this size. Um, so I just got done sharpening this. I know this works. Here's one of the blanks that I'm working on now. There's another of the blanks that I'm working on now. So I'll make a few of these. Um, these will be for sale in my shop if anybody wants one. Okay. So got a few finger marks on there. Yeah, these are pretty sharp. I think we can strop these and be good with those. Okay. So what I'm going to do today, I'm going to sharpen a kitchen knife. Show you how to do that, and show you how to sharpen the straight razor to get it hopefully hair poppingly sharp. Now we're not too far off. Um, what I would like, I can see some little bit of damage on the edge. Now I don't have 
What I need is my wife for readers, okay, so I can get in there and actually see this edge. Um, oh, the other thing is, really quickly, look at this logo, man. Went to Blade Show West, Blades Magazine put that on. Blade Show West, this is uh, Dark Timber Knives, you know. Uh, look at that logo, that's freaking manly. They got a tomahawk and a knife in there and a freaking skull and their maker's mark in the middle and custom knives, man, that's a, that's a logo right there. I need a logo, okay? This is pretty cool, combat abrasives, you know, USA knife maker, that kind of thing. I'm not necessarily saying, you know, endorsing these products, but that's a great logo. Okay, hold on, I'm going to zoom all in here and show you what I've got and just visit as we go. Get her back. What I've got here is my setup. I've um, got some water stones in here. That's what I use. Uh, I've got three different stones. Uh, I like the King Stones best. I'm not, again, I'm not endorsing those, but, you know, whatever. I'm um, talking about edge geometry here just a little bit. I talked about how my, how the blade that I made for the, for the TV show is a convex crank, kind of like this. That's what this knife is, but to a much lesser degree. Uh, much lesser degree. So it's got, you know, it's pretty much a straight grind down. It's got a little bit of that shape, and then I've got a secondary bevel here on the edge. Um, it gets very sharp, but it should be stout and robust as well. Okay. Um, what I've got here, this is a Mora knife. This Mora knife I just bought at Blade Show West. Love these things actually. See, I can, I can make my own knives, and I usually do, and carry them, however, um, yes, that is a Dr. Pepper. Anyway, I just carry the water bottle around for looks, so people think I'm healthy, and then I drink Dr. Pepper. I, I know it doesn't show in my physique, but, you know, hey. Anyway, this is the, the Mora knife has got a Scandi grind, which means um, it's, a, it's a shallow grind. It doesn't go all the way up, okay, but it's got, you know, part way up and then that is a flat grind right there. It goes straight to the edge. There's no secondary bevel really. Um, and those, they can get extremely sharp. They're pretty robust. The only thing that I don't like is sometimes when you're cutting, you know, you'll hit this, this edge. Now, this doesn't have that until clear up here, for example. And some knives are ground straight. And so what happens is then you have less resistance. Okay. This, the argument is that it pushes, you know, material out of the way. So, you know, it's just personal preference, whatever you like, I guess. Um, anyway, yeah, I, I carry my own as I was saying, but I make the, <laughs> yeah, I make these and I sell them or give them away because I'm like, wow, that's a nice knife. And then I have it and somebody's like, yeah, that's nice. Uh, do you have anything for sale? Yeah, well, this one right here. Or, you know, I need a gift, Christmas gift or something like that. So I can gift them. Anyway, um. And so, I don't want to necessarily beat the crap out of this. I want to use it. The Mora, though, for 15 bucks, man, I can take this thing out there and beat the snot out of it and have a great knife still. Okay, you sharpen these much like you do a straight razor. These Mora knives, and I'll show you why. So, I'll show you what I mean. I'll just use this stone. We're not going to start with this, but this is a thousand grit stone. It's king stone. Okay, so what we're going to do... Uh, it's been soaking in water, and uh, so what you do on this knife is you just hold it flat on the stone at the same angle. The angle's already been established. Okay, you don't want it to let it rock back. You don't ever want to grind on this part of the blade. You just want to grind this edge here. Okay, now what you do, what I like to do is go backwards, much like Murray Carter. I think I watched his videos, you know, uh, when I was first starting out, and so I picked up his techniques, um, you know, give him all prop, mad props, he, he freaking shaves with a spoon, so the proof is in the pudding there, okay, flip it, you know, same side, now this should, this knife doesn't need sharp, and I'm just showing you the technique, okay, and what I like to do, I'll either put a finger up here, and a thumb here, I'll put three fingers, especially with the razor, okay, but with the knife, not so much, now this is, this is easy to sharpen, the bevels and the angles have already been set for you. You don't have to change a thing. OK, 
Okay, all I did was work on this edge right here down to the final edge. Okay, fine. Now that is a sharp knife already. I'm not going to spend time sharpening it, not even for video purposes. Okay, however, this straight razor, okay, you sharpen a straight razor the exact same way. Now the bevel is set by the back of the razor. Now this is hollow ground. I don't know if you can see minor hollow ground as well. Maybe not to that extreme. Okay, and what I mean by hollow ground is, uh, there we go, maybe right there. Okay, you can see how that's kind of got a teardrop drop shape right here. It is hollowed out. Right here it's hollowed out, okay? And so what you do is you let it rest along this edge along the back, the spine of the the uh, the razor, and then right here, okay, so this is along the, along the, it's resting here, and it's resting here. All I do is take three fingers here, three or four fingers, take my other fingers and hold it right here, and just run it back and forth. Now there are guys here that do, you know, their super figure eights and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, that's great. Okay, now all I'm doing is this already has an edge set on it. Okay, so I don't need to set that edge too much. I don't need to grind on that too much. I'm just kind of refining this. Okay, now that's getting sharp again. Now let me show you another trick. What I, what I do on my knives, or what I do on my straight razors, is on the back here, I don't like just grinding on that with you know, stone. So this is what I use right here. If I can like get it peeled open here. Black electrical tape. Um, I grew up with this stuff. My dad worked for the power company so we always had rolls of this. When my baseballs, you know, when the cover tore on my baseballs, we just tape it up with electrical tape and keep playing. That was back in the day when, you know, we didn't have buckets of baseballs. Okay, so what I'm going to do is take this electrical tape, that's much too long, don't need that much, so I'll cut it right about there. And uh, this is going to give me a little steeper grind. Okay, just a little steeper grind. Man, that's sticky stuff. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just take the back of my razor and just gently poke it on the edge right there. Okay, push down. Now that's going to give me, oop, should lift up the tape. I got a little gunk on it from my hands, I'll try that again. Okay, well, son of a gun. Okay, so I'm not going to do that, so I'm going to lay it straight down. There, take that, you sticky tape, the one stick in my hand, but not the razor. Okay, so what I, now what I've got there is just a T with a razor and tape, and I'm just going to take and evenly, hopefully, press that all down so there are no lumps in that. Okay, got that on there. Now what I can do is I can, um, you know, draw with a pencil on this stone and all this good stuff and make sure it's all even. But what I'm looking for, now when I put this down, okay, now what I'm looking for is that it's flush across here, and I can see that by the metal that is going to lay down on the stone. What I'll do is I'll give this about, oh, I don't know, 30, 30, stro or 30 strokes here. Using the whole stone. You can see it's getting a little bit darker. There's some steel coming off there. Okay. Now, you can see some of the steel and stone that's coming off there. It's created a little bit of a slurry. Um, move that camera just a little bit closer. See if you can see a little bit better. Okay. So I've got this edge set. I feel like if I inspect that edge, I can see equal wear down most of it, except right here on the heel. Okay, it doesn't have the same glint. Now, if I had readers or I had some people use a micro, little mini microscope, uh, you know, a magnifying glass, that's all the readers are. Anyway, I'd see a little bit better that edge. But I'm just going to stroke, give it about five, ten more. Strokes on this stone. Okay, I'm going to turn this bad boy over. Use my thumbs here just because of where I'm at. Now, what I'm trying to do is give even pressure across the whole razor. These things are flexible. This is a thin edge, so we don't want to push down too hard in one spot. Kind of give e equal pressure. And we're going to do the same thing. Okay, good. 
good. Now we got we got uh, equal wear across there. The heel here of the razor, the back of the razor, is uh, shined up. The front is. I don't know if you can see that, but you can see some of the uh, some of the filings that have come off of there. You can see the slurry that's made, and this has got some steel in it, so it's doing its job. It's doing exactly what we want. Now what I'm going to do is take this razor. Okay. Now this bevel. Remember, before the tape, this was flat. The bevel was kind of like this. Now we've lifted it up, and we're actually working on that edge because that tape adds a little extra thickness. Um, this is where the razors are much easier to sharpen than knives, and I'll show you why in just a second, okay? But we've got this here. Now, what I'm going to do, we don't do the same exact thing, but we're just going to go backwards. One, two, three strokes. I'm going to turn over and come back this way. One, two, three. Three strokes. Do that again. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, now we've set that edge, we've set that bevel. Um, if this was a, a razor that needed a lot more work, needed more attention, you know, I'd spend some more time with that. Okay, so now what I've got is I've got a razor that is fairly sharp. It can shave my arms. Um, you can hear it, but it's not quite hair popping sharp yet. Oh, I should I should have brought paper. My wife hates it when I shave my arms. Okay, uh, she says I look like you know I've got mange or something. So um, anyway, she's cute. Okay, and I listen to her and I respect her opinion. You know what, what we've got here though is we've got a little bit of a burr on there. Now we can't see it, but we've created it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this razor very lightly in a piece of wood, just draw it across there. I can draw it across the stone even. That makes people cringe. Okay, but there, I just did that. Okay, now what, what that did very, very lightly, okay, is that re removed all of those burrs or any burrs that were on there and refined that edge. Now I'm going to go back and do the same thing. One, two, three. And you can do any combination, you know, you can do two and two, or four and four, or five and five, I just happen to do three. Well, I don't know. Is it a prime number? I don't know. Illuminati! Illuminati! Uh, okay. Yeah, the Illuminati of razor sharpening. Okay, now there are other videos out there that go into much greater detail, and I've watched those uh, in the past. Yeah, I recommend you do too if you, you know, really want to. Uh, now this, folks, is sharp. I can tell by a three finger test what's happening or a thumb test or whatever. I can feel that edge develop there and it is actually grabbing, okay? You can kind of feel it. Now what I've got here is my strop. Uh, on one side I've got the smooth side of the leather up. The other side, I've got the rough side. Um, I've used this for quite a few years. Uh, and I'm just going to take a little bit of this polishing compound, green polishing compound, put a little bit on there. You don't need a whole lot. Um, yeah. I don't know, I like it. So, <laughs> Green's my favorite color. So, okay, so same angle, nothing different. Just going to strop this, you know, 40, 50 times. Or 20, 25 because I'm bored already. I get bored. Now all we're doing there with the stropping is we're just pulling all of those burrs or any, uh, not burrs, uh, any steel, we're realigning that, just pulling it straight in line is all we're doing. Okay, and just kind of polishing that edge. Now, I like a flat strop. I don't don't necessarily like a strop that is, uh, you know, like you see on TV, a loose strop, I guess. And the reason is, is because I don't care how tight you hold that, as you're pulling across that strop this way, that leather is bowed a little bit. And what that does is the leather's bowed and it trails, so it pulls up that edge. This is perfectly flat, okay? or as perfectly flat as I could get it uh, by gluing it on here and then I, I actually sanded this off a little bit so it's flat. Okay, 
so the leather is. Okay, now what I've got there is I've got a straight razor that should stay sharp, hopefully. I don't know the maker of this razor, but it will shave, shave my arms pretty easy peasy. Um, it is not quite hair popping sharp. So, what I'm going to do then is bring this stone out. Now, this stone is a uh, 3,000 and 8,000. Okay, yeah, my king is a 1,000. However, I do know that my king stone is much harder than this. Okay, all I'm going to do is just get a little slurry worked up on there. I've got another little stone over there that does that, but I, I don't want to pause the video again. Okay, so now what I've got here is I've got a little bit of slurry up on this stone. Um, this is not my favorite stone. It's you know, made, in, made in China kind of thing. Um, it, it works well. Okay, it works well. But if you, I didn't have, you know, 200 bucks for a good, good uh, 10,000 grit stone. So I'm trying this one. Okay, so just gonna do the same thing. Okay, just hit this edge lightly. You can see the slurry there that it's producing. here. Now, what I'm going to do then is give my one, two, three, go one, two, three, one, two, three. Again, I'm working on this blade, not necessarily um, because it needs a new, a new bevel or a new edge, really. It just needs refining of the edge that it has. Okay, boom. Boom. And hit it here. Yeah, that's crazy. One, two, three. Here we go. One, two. Lightly, very lightly. We don't need a lot of pressure. Okay. So, back to the strop. And from here on out, this is sharp. Okay, all we need to do now is strop it. I do this when I'm watching TV watching the football game or basketball game or Forged in Fire, baby! Yes, I am going to be on Forged in Fire on December 5th. It's pretty freaking exciting. Um, I won't tell you how we did or anything, but it was a fantastical experience. Loved it. I would do it again in a heartbeat. Okay. Win, lose, or draw. It's awesome. Made some great friends. Had a great time. Okay, now that edge, I don't know if you can see that now, but that edge, see there's a little, little bit more polished here. Okay, should be, should be sharp enough now. Oh yeah, it is, it is sharp enough. Okay, so what I'm going to do is take off the black tape and be done with that. Now, I'm going to sharpen a kitchen knife, okay? Same process. The difference is on the kitchen knife, or any knives, is that I start at a lower grit. This is a uh, what is this? 800 grit, I think, stone here. It's water. I can't remember. Yeah, this is a Kingstone as well. I've got another one brand new out there in a box, so I guess I could go look. But what this is, is this is a hollow grain. Now, one of the reasons why I actually oh, hate the bone chop because I got this knife at a yard sale this is a Barclay Forge stainless steel Taiwan knife got it at a yard sale it was sharp it was a good knife or it still is okay the edge is not the edge is pretty terrible right now I don't know if you could cut hot butter with it maybe uh, anyway and so I was cutting up a deer that I had harvested, and, uh, and and there was a little bone there. I thought, you know what, I'll just chop through that. And I went whack, whack, and I looked at it, and these edges were folded over. So this was quite a few years ago. I tried to regrind it, and I was terrible at it. So um, I still love the knife, but it's a great edge, but yeah, crappy grind. Okay, so what I'm going to do 
is you see it laying flat there what I'm going to do is bring it up to the bevel now this knife here has that same bevel I can do the same thing okay I want to hold it where the edge is flat across the stone now as I do that though the thing is with the knife okay just giving it even strokes using the whole stone and I'm trying to keep this level or keep this the same angle all the time not level excuse me but keep it the same angle all the time now in the past I have sharpened knives and again you don't have to pull backwards you can sharpen it like this I don't care okay the key to this honestly is keeping this at the same angle all the time this way needs to be the same angle this way now I'm not saying you know honestly if I've sharpened this with a 15 degree bevel over here and a 13 on this side all it's going to do is push the edge one way or the other it's not going to be right in the middle but it's not going to harm the sharpening okay as long as you're pretty close but I'm going to give this and the reason I went to a higher stone a higher grit stone is because um, that edge is not awesome so I need to reform the edge okay so that's what I'm doing now now here's the thing I will just be honest with you this is much faster on a 2x72 belt grinder any belt grinder um, if you do not have water stones use sandpaper wet dry sandpaper and a flat surface a piece of glass a piece of granite marble you know something like that flattened stone um, you know that's actually been flattened man-made stone or you know in a pinch um, a piece of wood Okay, get a little oil on there, get a little water. Again, I just use water stones. I've had great luck with um, Arkansas stones as well. Um, you know, yeah, now try home, all that stuff, not a big deal. Okay, now the reason why I'm sharpening this right now on this, instead of the knife steel and the knife block, is all that knife steel does is it re, on the edge, it realigns the edge. This right here, Okay, this right here is redefining that edge. Now once I've gotten that to where I want to, in the interest of time, I'm not going to take it all the way down. Once I've got that, I'm going to go to that edge, and I'm going to lift it up just a titch more. Okay, not much, so I've got that, the actual cutting edge riding on the stone for sure. Again, one, two, three, okay, one, two, three okay now take that right on that wood draw it across there test it okay we started putting an edge on it so I'm gonna go back I'm gonna go one two three again one two and three now okay if I if I wanted to really if I wanted to shave with this I would keep going with that same stone but I'm not going to in the interest of time okay now what I've got here I've got my stone my thousand grit back I'm just gonna hit this a second with this 3000 there's a little water in there so it's kind of okay we're just gonna create a little bit of slurry renew that surface of the stone you can see where it's kind of worn out I'm gonna have to spend a little bit of time I've got a diamond uh, stone in there to, just for that just to flatten that out perfectly Okay, now one, two, three, one, two, three, three. Now what that does is that's got some. Uh, you can see there's still some slurry there from the stone, um, but it also now has steel particles in it, which means it is removing steel and doing its job. Okay, there we go. Okay, what I'm doing then is I'm again I put set the edge, I'm lifting it up just a little bit so it's the same as the other stone, and just drawing it gently across there. I'm not putting much pressure at all, just barely any pressure. One, two, three, one, two, three. Now here's where the where I have screwed up sharpening so many times. And so if you're having problems with sharpening, this may be it. If you get that too high, see I've set it here and then I've lifted it that much. I mean honestly I can feel where that edge makes contact with the stone with my fingers. That's why they're there. 
Okay, and then I just lift it, oh man, maybe one more degree. Okay, now if I get in a hurry though, and I've done this a million times and I like my mind wanders or something and I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, I ruined it. Okay, so if that's the case, what happens is sometimes we get the bell wrong or we're rocking it or we get to start the bevel nice here and then we start up here and then we're rolling that edge over okay then you've got to start over again I mean you gotta go back to the beginning so don't be frustrated if you're not getting that sharpness that you want three okay one two and three okay now see I can feel literally feel that where that knife is on that stone with my thumb Okay, now I'm going to show you a secret trick. You know how I said that we are this, the um, aligning that edge, okay, pulling it straight, pulling any burrs off of there? Okay, still not quite as sharp as I want. This wood slice of meat, wood slice of tomato like a, like a champion. Okay, now what I've got here, this is a ceramic rod, right? This is off of the old power lines and stuff. People use these all the time, kind of like a uh, knife steel. I like these right here. This has two baby ceramic rods in there. Okay, now once I hit that, I pull across there. Now what's that? what that's done is I can feel, as I pull it across there, I can feel any spots. So if it like boom, boom, bumps, if it like slows down, I know I need to work on that spot just a little bit more. One, two, three, okay. One, two, three. Yes, I could shave with this knife, you know, if I use that same process down to like a straight razor, okay. I don't need to. This is food prep. This is sharp enough now. Now, what I'm going to do is run it on this strop right here again. One, two, three. Again, when you're stropping, you want to lay it flat. You want to barely catch that edge. Same angle that you used here on each side. Okay. You do not want to get strop up here. Okay. Or down. You're not going to touch anything down. You see, you see the gap underneath there, the dark. You want it right there. Okay. Go up too high. You'll roll the edge. Again, strop, 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 strop. Boom. You're done. Okay. Now. Okay, that is sharp enough to cut a tomato for sure. Run across there. Okay, it is not hair poppingly razor sharp, which you know that's okay. Um, run it through here one more time, just kind of straighten out that edge. And now, yep, it's not catching anymore where I where I thought it was. Right there, it's got a little bit. That's probably where I hit that bone. <laughs> Seriously, that was terrible. Okay, um, let me see if I can find a piece of paper here to prove that it is kind of sharp. Okay, so I got my paper here. Um, just out of the mail. Opened it anyway. Um, so, uh, here we go. Well, come on now. There we go. Double it up, see if we can cut double. Yeah, it'll do her. Anyway, that's the knife knife sharpening video. Hit me up in the comments if you have any questions. Um, if you have, you know, comments. Uh, I'm still waiting for my first troll, you know, to be haters. You know, that'd be cool too. Um, anyway, yeah, there, there are a thousand different techniques, different ways to actually sharpen. Uh, I don't know if one way is best. This is how I do it, but this will sharpen knives, razors, um, you know, whatever you've got. So anyway, um, if you like the video, please hit like, hit subscribe, share the crap out of it, and watch on December 5th for the episode of Fortune and Fire. Thank you again.